Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. You are listening to audio from the table. If you'd like to learn more about our community or donate to this ministry, please visit the table tx.com. Grace and Peace Table Podcast listeners, Brett here. Glad to be with you all this week. So the title of my message is Ambition. Our text is uh, from the lectionary. We're back on the kind of prescribed readings for the church calendar um, over the next few weeks. And uh, so we're in James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, which reads, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So ambition, eh, this is a tricky one. Like, is ambition good? Is it bad? Is it a little both? Is it like sometimes good, but then other times bad, depending on the context or who's wielding it? Well, based on this text, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, ambition, it's like, ambition is like amphetamines. Energizing, (laughs) but addictive and dangerous. That may seem like a kind of wild overstatement, but if, I mean, actually these are links. Like you can go find articles right now on the Googles about the rise of so-called study drugs where people are basically illegally using Adderall. They don't have ADD or anything. They're just using Adderall and other amphetamines to get ahead. Uh, It's like a staple in certain schools and things, you know? And so I don't think it's a stretch to kind of link the two. Like in short, when we are in that, that kind of ambitious mode, can we get stuff done? Absolutely. Can we move mountains? Absolutely. Will the broader culture applaud us? And say, oh, look at you, you're the pinnacle of what we all should be. Absolutely. And yet, in this passage, James, he begins to to poke, to dig, to to unearth the the dark secret hiding in ambition. There's a a scene that's always stuck with me from the movie um, Gladiator. You, you may remember it if you've seen it. So um, in the scene, the current but aging emperor of Rome, Marcus Aurelius, tells his son, Commodus, uh, who's played by Joaquin Phoenix, uh, he says basically that he will not, he, Commodus, will not be the next emperor of Rome. He basically knows his son is just not a, not a virtuous man. He's psychopathic and he's not fit to rule. So when Aurelius breaks the news to his son, you can kind of sense the the simmering, you know, emotion and rage bubbling within Commodus. What I'll never forget, though, is how he responds. I mean, you can probably see in your mind's eye, like Joaquin Phoenix saying this. So Commodus replies, you wrote to me once, Father, listing the four chief virtues, wisdom, justice, fortitude, and temperance. As I read the list, I knew I had none of them. But I have other virtues, Father. (laughs) And what's the first virtue he names? Ambition. And just the way he says it, you know, uh (laughs) uh-oh, this is not good. And sure enough, it's not. For in like just a few minutes later, he embraces his father as though to hug and reconcile with him. But actually... He just keeps holding him and you realize, oh God, oh no, oh, he's smothering him to death, right? You see, there is, there's a dark secret hiding in the heart of ambition. It's selfish. That's the thing. 
it's just got so much self, right? And, and this is what James in our text today, this is what he sees so clearly. And this is why he's constantly linking the two words beginning in verse 14 again. But if you harbor bitter envy and what? Selfish ambition in your hearts. Don't boast about it or deny the truth. Such so-called wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Right? That, I mean, that's intense language there. Demonic. Selfish ambition is demonic. Wow. That's a tough word for us in our culture, right? Where we really prize ambition. <laughs> We're kind of with Commodus on this. You know, we really venerate it, not James. Verse 16, for where you have envy and, again, selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Augustine, in his uh, famous books, Confessions and City of God, uh, speaks to this. He names worldly ambition as one of the, the primary obstacles to cultivating the heart of Christ within, which is interesting. Uh, it's, it's an obstacle. It's a problem. Right. He says, basically, the issue is that we have within us uh, a, and this is the, the Latin, it's libido principandi, uh, which means a lust for being first. During COVID, someone uh, left our, our church community and there was a few reasons, kind of a few factors in it. It was, they were moving. So it was going to, it was already a long drive for them, but it was like even longer drive. Um, but also I think kind of factoring in, we weren't actually meeting in person for a long stretch, you know, they were looking for another church that actually was meeting in person and, um, you know, all that. And so I, I think because of our, you know, relationship and such, I think they didn't necessarily think anything of it. So, you know, as they let me know, they basically were just like, Hey, going to a different church. And I think because of our relationship, maybe because they thought too, I was more secure than I was. Um, <laughs> they started talking about how awesome, their new church, um, is, was, you know, and they said, um, oh yeah, it's like, it's a church plan. Actually it started around the time the table did, but, oh, there's a lot of people like, oh, it's great energy. We're so excited to be there. And I knew like, I knew the right answer. The right response to them was like, oh, it's wonderful. And so that's, you know, that's what I said. I was like, oh, this is great. That's so great. But inwardly, truth be told, I was dying inside. I think the whole COVID season made it even worse. I was already nervous about, you know, just our future and, and all that. So anyway, here's the thing. I go on this other church's website. <laughs> that was a mistake. I have a full on James 3, 13 through 18 moment. Uh, verse 14 again, if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition. And yeah, that was me envious like i had to admit the church it did look super cool <laughs> they were they were cooler than us admittedly i think their pastor was cooler than me um and and then i had this selfish ambition moment as i kind of vowed to myself quietly like we can we can be that cool you know <laughs> we can we can win the church wars is, i don't know it was weird that experience actually led me to one of my personal rules now which is i avoid other church websites and social media sites like that's a no-no for me because when i do i like just i'm so tempted to go down this twisted libido principandi rabbit hole of comparing you know our church to their church how many staff do they have how how many followers on instagram like oh lord have mercy you see ambition this lust to be first lust to win oh it can be energizing it can get you places but buyer beware <laughs> it's from the evil one in fact augustine said not only do you have libido principandi, but that illness leads to its twin brother, uh, libido dominandi, which means a lust to dominate. And he says, th like, this is the way of the world. This lust for being first, this lust to dominate. It can be powerful, a powerful energetic force. I mean, it can indeed drive cultures and civilizations and organizations all forward into what they believe is progress. But it's, it's weird. It's like progress without progress. It's progress that's actually regression. Like outwardly, materially, I mean, it looks successful. Inwardly. It can be just rotten to the core, full of dead men's bones. Why? Because it's, it's motivated by the self. It's selfish. Okay, so what's the, 
the proper response. Uh, ambition must be transformed and healed by God's grace into deep and loving service of others. It's, it's taking that energy and instead of directing it inwards towards the self, instead you direct it outwards into the world. I think here of uh, Simon Sinek's famous business book, Start With Why. I think it's really instructive here. So his main point is basically we often start with what and then we do the how, but we never ask like why. We never really interrogate our why. Like what? why are we doing this? You see, the, the point here is that loving service of others in the way of Jesus. Oh, that's a fantastic why. That's an energizing, God-inspired why. We have to be careful, though, that a more kind of selfish, ambitious, those whys, so to speak, don't begin to creep in. I'll, I'll close with this. Most of us, I think, are familiar with the uh, the 12-step program of Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, we, we may know the first step. The first step is honesty, to admit we're powerless over alcohol, that our lives have become unmanageable. Um, however, what's less well known is the final step, the 12th step. That's the one known as service, which says, having had this spiritual awakening, we now vow to carry this message to others who are struggling. I think this is really in- insightful because, you see, what they've learned is that perhaps the most important step in my own recovery and healing is actually to do what? To move out into the world in a posture of loving service. Like, that just reminds me so much of Christ, the one who came as the servant of all, right? To, you see, to have others I am helping, like, that's the antidote to ambition. Begin serving, without the need for applause, without the need for some pat on the back, simply serve and then find the spirit, the the energy, the power of God growing and growing within you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.